formerly the Philippine Biomedical Device Innovation Consortium, which is quite a mouthful. Uh, so we now go by the name of uh, Biomedic PH. And uh, I think it will be good for us to uh, kick this off with a short round of introductions. So let me start by, uh, let, let, maybe we can start with our, our, my partners in crime. Okay, so Lorraine and then that. Good afternoon, I'm Dr. Lorraine Caldon, health analyst for the Biomedic PH. I'm Nathaniel Cruz, electronics engineer, tech analyst for Biomedic PH. Right, and then can we ask, uh, Can we ask uh, our participants? Maybe we can start that uh, from this end and then work our way uh, clockwise. Good afternoon, I'm Ramon Garcia from Mapua University. Good afternoon, I'm Glenn McBeal, also from Mapua University. Uh, I'm Mayor Vincent Gaya from Mapua University. Uh, good afternoon, I'm Vic Rubet of Electronic Indices Association in the Philippines. Afternoon, Vic. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, this one is Arzuela from uh, Analog Devices. Hi, Ivan Santos from Analog Devices. Good afternoon. Hi, this one is Ivan. Norman Bardalis, Industrial Designer for Hele. Hele is one of the uh, projects under the uh, Picari uh, program. I'm Wilson Leong from Xylo Electronics, Philippines. Dr. Wilson. I'm uh, Michael Maguera from Project Agapay from La Salle. Paul Dominic Benigan, uh, Agapay from the La Salle University. Hi, I'm Jude Sassing from Orthopedic International. Hi, Jude. Hi, I'm Al Serafica. I used to have a medical device company in the US. 17 years, I'm a public scientist and trying to help you guys <laughs> and hopefully something will happen and support, also work with Louie mm -hmm. at the tech transfer office in the US. I am. I am Ruan Destula from UP Manila and Manila Health Tech Incorporated. And, uh, Kaplag na rin ako on your behalf, no? Bistahin yung booth ng uh, M-Tech tsaka ng OII. Real companies. Uh, real companies with, uh, 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 with great products. Oo nga daw, sabi sa akin, enjoy kanina. So, uh, so congrats also on the, the company milestones for, for both. Uh, if you haven't been to the main exhibit hall in the World Trade Center, uh, please visit, especially our uh, two industry partners and spin-offs here. And uh, of course, our sponsors. from <laughs> I am Joanna America from PCHR. All right. Uh, do we have any new uh, arrivals? I, Yes, sir. Would you like to? from Heritage and Development. Ah, okay. Can, can you introduce yourself? Do we have a mic there? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Henry Stipone from Heritage and Development Council. All right. Good afternoon. Anybody else? I am Renzo Polinar from PCHRD. Hi, I'm Ermin Garci Gamira from PCHRD. Good afternoon, I'm Fadi Maespiritu from PCHRD. Thank you. Okay, so um, what we'll do is uh, give you a uh, short, for those of you who are, are, are new and, or maybe haven't uh, been with us for a while, I would like to give you an update also on, on what we have in terms of our process, in terms of the community that, that we're building. Uh, 
and then we'll segue to some new initiatives from DOST uh, to support uh, uh, collaboration with, uh, with the industry. And then uh, we'll walk through a couple of uh, case studies. This is for inspiration. No? So we can see what's, what's going on, not just in the Philippines, but in our, our neighboring countries. And then uh, we, uh, one of the key outcomes that uh, we, we hope to achieve uh, with this session is to identify a couple more uh, initiatives that we can work on and support under the biomedic PH umbrella. All right. So with that, uh, so that's our, our program. That's our program for uh, for today, and uh, uh, as we're going through this, uh, don't hesitate to uh, raise your hand if you have any questions or, or suggestions. Okay, so let's begin. So, uh, Biomedic PH was founded to address the questions you see before you know from the from the clinical side, at the mga doc doctors and, and other health uh, health professionals. Uh, maybe they have uh, problems, clinical problems that they, they need uh, solutions for, but they don't know where to find collaborators that, provide, that can provide the right technical expertise. So that's number one problem. Number two problem is uh, how do you get funding to, to start working on the R&D? And then on the engineering side, uh, once you have a, a product, how do you then make sure that that product gets the proper set of feedback, approvals, and so on uh, from the clinical uh, sector. And then uh, from the industry side, if you now have a product, how do you make sure that this gets manufactured, scaled, distributed, supported, serviced um, uh, with, uh, with customers? All right? So uh, to that end, we have evolved a, a process based also on best practices uh, from, from around the world. In general, this process you can divide into two phases. Uh, the first is to narrow down, to identify and, and, and uh, define the, the opportunity and then mobilize uh, the, the resources to, to start working on that uh, opportunity. And then once we have an, an, an early uh, prototype and uh, I ideally have it through some early, uh, preliminary clinical testing, we, we take it, we start bringing it to the market by looking at uh, manufacturing, investment, and, uh, and so on, and distribution and service partners and so on. Okay. So I hope, it's hard to yellow, I hope you can uh, read it. So, can we turn off the lights in the front? Okay. Yeah, okay, I hope that's better. So, uh, phase one, uh, and, and this, this happens, uh, this can happen as quickly as, uh, as one to two months, okay? So, uh, we start with the doctors. We start with the nurses and the other health professionals. Sa kanila nagagaling yung problem, sa kanila nagagaling yung opportunity. So, the, the, the clinical partners, uh, kick off the process by identifying the, the the medical problem, and then we in in the the secretariat we, we do our best to try to translate that clinical problem into a an initial set of engineering sub problems or specifications. Because ang isang natin problema problema there's a language barrier na iba yung lenguaje ng I'm an electrical engineer by training, so if we language namin ni para yung language ng ng doctor, no. So we have to, and that's why uh, the rain is a medical doctor and the nat is a medical engineer, no. So we act as the translators, and then we try to do once we um, do our initial attempt to break down the problem into engineering, various engineering components and specialties. We then farm it out to our research partners, mostly in the in the academe. Um, to uh, propose the technical solutions to those problems. And then we do the matching. So you can think of us as a, a dating service for innovation. Okay, and then next, uh, so the dating service kami, siyempre my first date. And the first date is a, uh, an observership. So we, we organize a session where the technical team uh, is hosted by the clinician to visit uh, clinic, an, uh, an, an emergency room, 
okay, uh, or uh, an operating uh, an operating room, just to understand the the use case and the scenarios under which the technologies will be will be deployed. And uh, so, uh, with all of this information in the in the heads of the team, then we ask them to sit down and we facilitate a design sprint for them, translating their observations and the needs uh, into a set of, uh, into a technical plan. So, may tech, may tech specs tayo. Kasi yun know, ang kailangan ng engineering. Pag engineering, pinigyan mo na ng specs, okay, they can start working. No? Walang specs, mahirap, no? Lalo pa yun. Okay, and then once once the design is completed, uh, we, we do uh, one round of pitching to just confirm that we're all on the same page with respect to the problem and the solution. And then we we help the um, we help the team uh, submit a proposal to the various funding agencies, primarily to DOST, PCHRD. And later on, uh, they uh, PCHRD will will talk about some exciting new initiatives uh, for supporting innovation. So they have some new programs for, for funding, and I hope uh, we can uh, help them. We can help them spend the money. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, once there is a plan, and habang hinihintay namin yung, yung, yung funding, uh, uh, we do all the red tape behind the scenes. Because sometimes the red tape is the one that, uh, sometimes these are the showstoppers. Sometimes it's not the technology. The technology and the clinical need, that's sometimes the easy part. The red tape then sometimes is the, the harder part. So we make sure um, that's uh, addressed. We take care, we, we advise on, on IP and, and and uh, facilitating agreements between the, the, the research uh, partners. Uh, at, if, if it's at a stage where, where uh, a manufacturing partner um, uh, needs to be brought in, and I'm, we're grateful for those from the manufacturing sector who are here with us today, then we facilitate agreements with, with uh, those partners as well. Um, um, we, we advise on engaging uh, production partners and then uh, we also help take the product, help the team um, do a design and uh, implement the, the clinical trial or the, the field testing for the product. And then if, if that uh, is successful, um, then we facilitate uh, agreements for technology transfer um, to a distributor and or a manufacturing uh, partner. Okay, next slide. So to date, we've uh, we, we have a small but uh, growing community of uh, the the health and manufacturing uh, sector. So we have several uh, hospital uh, partners, uh, BGH, uh, uh, Lung Center, uh, UE, and uh, uh, so, right. And then um, uh, we have several uh, academic uh, partners here. Um, and on the manufacturing side, uh, manufacturing side, we, we work with uh, IMI uh, Ionics and Orthopedic Innovations, and also providing uh, prototyping support from uh, some of our uh, academic institutions. We have uh, currently uh, Exis Dialog and uh, Maxim uh, Integrated. And in the uh, regulatory side, in the funding side, so of course we have the OSTPC, HRD, but we pro we also, uh, we're also working with the FDA uh, and other funding agencies uh, such as JET, uh, Tropicari, uh, USAID, and uh, Newton Fund. All right, next slide, please. So here's uh, our uh, current pipeline of uh, products and uh, we have three that already have received uh, uh, funding um, and uh, Agapai is uh, the, the team of, uh, of, of Paul uh, and led by uh, Dr. Bugtai uh, is working on uh, rehab, a, tele, uh, a robotic rehab uh, technology. We have uh, Ginhawa led by uh, Dr. Bagos which is working on a uh, ventilator. Uh, and then uh, Helen, led by uh, Dr. Chong, is working on a hearing screening uh, device for, for newborns that will facilitate uh, implementation of the, of the newborn uh, hearing screening act. Okay, so may patas po yan. 
in, in addition to those uh, projects, uh, we also have uh, initiatives in wound care. Uh, sorry, starting at the top, we have uh, uh, initiatives in diagnostics, um, infectious disease, and surgical pathology. And uh, hopefully, okay, project with Dr. Destura, we can get that uh, also started. Uh, we have initiative for, for eye screening, uh, wound care, uh, surgical tools, particularly in, uh, in orthopedics, uh, and uh, rehab, and other technologies uh, like Agapai for, for uh, rehab exercises. So while we're doing uh, you know, the, the next uh, few talks, uh, we'd like to, to ask the following questions from all of our uh, partners uh, here today. Okay, and we're constantly on the lookout for opportunities uh, to provide uh, some to matching and we'll consolidate and then match it up. So, uh, again, as consistent with our process, uh, we, we, like, we, we need your, your inputs on uh, health and clinical pro uh, uh, problems that uh, we may possibly uh, address. Okay. And then we want an idea. So the first one is in general which which uh, health uh, areas or sectors uh, you might be uh, your, your organization might be involved in, and in that particular sector, what are specific problem uh, areas that uh, you think we might be able to help you with, and also give us an idea how prevalent uh, that problem might be. So. Prevalence might be in the form of, say, a number of cases, uh, a year or, or a month that you encounter. You may, uh, another way of, uh, of uh, describing prevalence is in terms of number of uh, sites uh, that would, in, uh, would be affected or would benefit um, if we have a, a solution. So it could either be in terms of number of cases or number of, uh, or number of sites. All right. Okay, uh, that's my uh, and, and that's my last slide. So I'd like to. Are there any questions on on the consortium? Do you have a membership fee? we're. sponsor, so we don't have membership fee. Yeah, ang fee lang is uh, in effect to participate. Kami pa ngayon nagpapakain eh. So, uh, is to participate, uh, to, to send, uh, to provide uh, opportunities, problem areas for us to, to tackle, uh, as well as uh, technical uh, and, and other relevant expertise um, to move the innovation from the lab to the clinics, to the patients. Yes. Yeah, just curious now. This is a phase one, sir. Uh, no, uh, I think it's a phase one. Um, before the funding, it's not really easy to take up by the team so far. Um, For the most part, yes. Although, uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, we do have, uh, I, I mentioned the uh, Exis Dialogue and, and Maxim. They are able to, some of uh, the early proof of concept. Uh, Especially if the work is done by uh, a student team, uh, we are able to we are able to uh, produce uh, very quick prototypes, not only electronics, and, and that's certainly been uh, very help, helpful. Several of our the projects in our portfolio uh, benefited um, from that kind of uh, prototyping support because one of the things that is very helpful for the clinicians is to see something very tangible, ni yung papel lang or PowerPoint or even a CAD drawing. If, if they can you know, see it and touch it and interact with it, then it, it facilitates the discussion and helps uh, refine the, the design faster. So um, you, it, it's uh, not at all uh, unusual that even in the design sprint, there might even be some very quick prototyping done at, at that stage. And uh, the funding that is then being requested would be to take that very early group, group prototype into something that would then go through the clinical trials. Yeah, and that's, that's when you need some, uh, some more serious funding 
to get through that stage. Kasi kailangan, it, uh, hindi na siya pwedeng yung sa laboratory lang. It has to be a deployable uh, prototype. It has to pass at least some, already some safety uh, testing before it goes to that stage. Did that help? Okay, thank you. Uh, other questions? All right, uh, with that, I'd like to turn the floor over to, to Joanna. Okay, we'll talk about uh, this HRD uh, support for, for this uh, innovation. Good afternoon, I'm Joanna. I'm from PCHRD. I'm one of the project officers for this um, priority area, hospital equipment and biomedical devices. So just a brief description, um, HEBD or hospital equipment and biomedical devices. So we aim to develop affordable, safe and reliable hospital equipment and biomedical devices. We also develop um, skills and expertise in biomedical engineering and related areas. So, parang kahapon po, tinanong ako if how many MS or PhD graduates on biomedical engineering can we support. So, parang I need also uh, ano po, an estimate regarding that or your info. And then, we also develop support system towards a Philippine biomedical, de uh, biomedical devices or life sciences industry such as this one, PPDIC. So for the benefits, um, HEBD, we aim to develop um, safe and effective, affordable, easy to operate, um, accessible, and fit for the Filipinos hospital equipment and biomedical devices. So ito po yung um, NURA, or the Harmonized National R&D Agenda for Health for 2017 to 2022. So for the specific topics, um, this is from the previous NURA na po. We have um, ventilator, prosthesis, minimally invasive surgical and rehabilitation equipment, LED, open operating room lights, and then the anesthesia machine. So currently, we only have projects under ventilator, prosthesis, and the minimally invasive surgical and rehabilitation equipment. So for the LED and the anesthesia machine, wala po kami proposal na natanggap for the past mura. Um, this is the result of the initial consultation held um, October 2016. So some of the suggested priority technologies are the following. So the respiratory failure support, um, devices, artificial body part replacement, uh, rehab, rehabilitation medicine, minimally invasive surgical procedures, and then we, have, we added contraception and birth control devices, and then orthopedic surgery post-operative care, spinal disorders, eye health, wound care, primary health care, and PWD assistive devices. So, um, ito po yung mga technologies or that we developed through um, the past NURA and the current NURA. So, in 2015, the access system was commercialized, so our proponent uh, engineer Jude Sassen is here. And then 2016, the Agabay Exoskeleton from DLSU, Singapore. So they developed their prototype. And then for 2017, for the relief vent or the Ginhawa, we are currently um, undergoing or ongoing po yung clinical trials. And then they developed also uh, another prototype. And then we have a new project which is the gate assessment system. This is under USP. So they aim to develop normative data and wearable sensors for the assessment. So for the, these are ongoing projects. So we have three. So number one po yung ventilator. So we already developed three new prototypes. So this is the initial prototype, medyo very crude pa yan. But right now, mas maliit na siya. And then um, there are currently ongoing clinical trials. And for the Agapay, our implementing agency is Delasal. Our proponent is Dr. Nilo Buttai. So we have initial product design and prototyping done. And then we have three rehab exoskeleton prototypes developed. So this is the gate assessment. Our proponent is Dr. Angelo de la Cruz. So ang first phase po nila is to conduct sampling of healthy and post-stroke patients and then the software development. So the next phase na po yung wearable sensor. So these are some of the expected outputs that we aim 
ko for this uh, program. So, number one, publications. Number two, products. Um, the ventilator, the rehab exoskeleton, and then the assessment system. And also, eventually, policies. Uh, specifically, dun po sa gate assessment, a standard or reference database that may be used by rehab centers in the Philippines. So, ito po kasi yung um, presentation namin for using GIF. So, may outcome. So, eventually, sana po, we, in, uh, we can increase domestic production of hospital equipment and biomedical devices. And then, develop new system or applications that may be used by different hospitals and health facilities, and also further creation of startups. So ito po yung, dinis, yung sinasabi ni Dr. Louie kanina that we have um, this Science for Change program or accelerated R&D program for capacity building of research and development institutions and industrial competitiveness. Next slide, please. So we have five um, programs, but Ito po yung four yung major on um, the niche centers in the regions for R&D, also known as NICER. And then we have the R&D Leadership Program or RDT. And then a collaborative R&D to leverage Philippine economy, Cradle for RTIs and industry. And then fourth one, Business Innovation through s and for industry or business. So ito po yung uh, very and then, uh, a brief description of the four lead programs that we are currently supporting. So for the NICER, this is to accelerate industrial competitiveness by capacitating HEIs in the region, so specific po for the regions, to undertake quality research that will promote regional development. And then hand in hand with RDD, which will employ experts with strong leadership, management, and innovative policy-making proficiencies to be in charge of strengthening the research capacities of each EI. So they will lead in the establishment of the NICER. And then for the other part, well, this is more for the industry. So for Cradle, we would like to create a synergistic relationship between the academy and the industry. So with the goal of invigorating R&D. So uh, PP. And then this is to level up the Philippine indus industrial sector through industry R&D. So uh, mainly po, uh, the acquisition of new technologies could support that. And um, an acquisition of strategic and rel relevant technologies to enhance their technology level and production processes. So yung credit po for um, industry and HEIs and then beast for the industry. Maximum funding as of now is five million per project, but we can also give more if there are funds available. On, on the cradle, do you fund clinical evaluation? Yes. Basta sir, ang cradle kailangan may partner kaya na ECI. Yes. BIST is for industry. No, you cradle yung my partner dapat ni GI. Yung business for industry. Or a startup. So if you're an established company or a startup company, right? Yung yung beneficiary ng business. But it's not just for technology, to acquire technology that you want to license. License in. License in. Or clinical rollout. When there's a technology outside that you want to acquire that will help your business here or it will help accelerate uh, the utilization of the, your locally developed technology. Quite a One of several possible uses. So it, it could be, just to recap the discussion so far, it could be for clinical trials, it could be for technology acquisition, suppose you need, suppose your product has several components, one of which may need, you may need technology sourcing uh, to license in. 
the, the technology. Uh, it could be also for uh, uh, scale up, what that one is? For, for kind of pre-production equipment for equipment acquisition for 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 production. So, parang capability improves the capability, right? Asa yan nandito yung production, eh? In production processes. It's a loan right now. I want to clarify it. Right? Loan, right? It is, yeah, zero percent loan. I think, but, but it is a loan. You, you pay it after three years after completion of the project. So let's say your project runs three for years. three years. So after three years, then pa lang mo start yung. Yung payment, pero hindi la, not part of it. Not. Ah, pero nothing. Pero you're only. You're, you're ang ang payment period is for a maximum of three years. Then yeah, three years. Then. But, so this is not just the uh, TAPI funds, no, no, uh, this is from uh, DOST. This is this DOST Central Office funds. Yeah, but we can... If, if, yes, uh, we can tell you if it's health related, we are the evaluate. Yeah, so this we recommend to the central office which ones can be funded, which ones. But outside of PCHRD budget. Outside of PCHRD budget. But kung talagang kailangan, we can complement. Oh. Yeah, yes. question on the question. current projects. Curious na kung yung may differentiator ba yung current projects with the competitors sa market na? That's one of the things we normally, previously, um, the proponents were not really, did not have a systematic way of positioning the product and identifying all of those different factors that could facilitate uh, technology adoption. But that's one of the things we do in, in the consortium. When they go through the process, we, uh, we take them through the customer development framework where we identify all of the different Factors, uh, uh, IP, manufacturing, competitive advantage. Yeah, we assess the technology readiness level. We look at markets. We look at user stories. So it's not just you know the usual engineering project uh, approach to innovation. We have to make sure that when we start this, that the finish line, you know, are uh, health beneficiaries, patients, and uh, health professionals. So it's an end-to-end -end, uh, design and thinking process. After we submit, then the environment will help uh, develop the idea. So, okay. Right, so we, we, we uh, the biomedic creation will help uh, shepherd the uh, project through all of the various phases. As an KPI, it's not just how many proposals we get, it's how many technologies actually get, get deployed and how many beneficiaries there are. And so that's our ultimate. Make sure all of the issues are including regulatory, no? Because we are not just regulatory, uh, so we make sure that this uh, address. So we have identified. So we, when we started, we took stock of all of the the issues that were hindering uh, innovation previously, and then we just enumerated all of them. We hooked up also with um, ad advisors from around the world. We visited our. We have a models. Uh, Ang um, idol namin yung ano, the, the UCSF, uh, previously it was a pediatric innovations uh, program, but they now expanded beyond uh, pediatric devices. So, dami na nilang natakil. But, so, um, there are role models that we are, are following to make sure that the innovation gets Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Differentiating features of the projects. Because uh, um, I, I just also noticed that uh, in some presentation, that you know, sa research agenda, when uh, uh, you support uh, affordable, safe. I was looking for innovative or right. new. Para merong competitive, competitive edge, right. and I think it's important right. to have something not just uh, me too low cost. Yeah. We're editing it as you speak. Thank <laughs> you.
Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, it's a good. Uh, that's a good suggestion. To succeed in the marketplace, you have to have that that edge. Otherwise, you will just continue importing. Right. I think that's a, that's a good point. Uh, we have a couple of new uh, participants joining us today. Uh, can you uh, can you introduce yourselves? driver of innovation. Uh, our, our Fab Lab is in Mindanao State University, IIT. We're just an enabler of innovation. I, I have three cases which um, we had this because you, you, you presented phases of ideation right, up right. until it finished. What happened right. is my practice, based on my experiences uh, for the past four months, we had this what we call design a thought wherein we paired we paired into mga doctors who have hookots from surgeons. We have we have med med techs. So a lot of hookots from the small scalpels to the very big things that they want. We paired them with art designers. So for one day, one day the, 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 the source of the idea gets to be paired with a 3D modeler. So this talk, right. doctor talks a lot, <laughs> and, and right. this 3D modeler gets to interpret what, what he wants. Um, one very important case that happened was that there's this surgeon and there's this med tech who are working on their on their projects, not ours, since we're just an enabler. Right. And there's this group of neonatologists from Kukyendi Oro who develop a warmer. If you can remember, it's yung, yung water, yung water dispenser natin, the cheap water dispenser. Right. They had that engineered and, and, and yeah, uh, yeah. cut off and then, right. and then engineered, engineered the, the heating and, and where right. they can simulate. But the thing is, we are just an enabler. Our role, actually, I can't see our role as a fab lab in this big picture because these are their intellectual property. These are their projects. And what we can just do is to, to promote this. And what, we have been, and what has been happening so far in practice, they are not they are not applying for this. And me when, as... When they say they are not applying for this, they are not, they 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 are are not taking not, it to the next step? Yes, they, they are not taking uh -huh. it to the next step. They know they have a market. They, they, they so already they're... passed through the ideation steps. Since right. We already developed prototypes and 3D models for them. Right. And, and, and me as a fab lab manager, I know that I, I don't see a role kasi in, 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 in this ecosystem because I, I am just an enabler. Uh, I am just an enabler of how things are done. I'm not the originator in this case. I'm just the organizer of the ideation campaign. So yeah. in the project, Dr. Louis, I, I, uh, innovation hubs like Pop Labs. You, you play a key role, no? Yeah. Don't, don't discount your contribution. No? That's, yeah. uh, that's absolutely a very key role in being at an early stage interacting with the clinicians. Very important. Because I'm saying, Dr. Louis, I, I'm, ac I'm, accepting, I'm accepting a lot of who goes. Right. And then we who go here, who go there, and I pair them. And then usually what happens is they don't really get jumped off. They just, so uh, after the prototype. Do you know Dr. Uh, Professor Sheila Ramos? Yes, yes, so we are work I, I'm working so with her. So she's our lead, she's in contact with uh, IIT. Kami the two Dr. Lubi, Kami the two Dr. Lubi, we are also conversing with these originators. Right. And usually what happens, they die down with their idea. And, and us, we cannot jump start this since it's unethical for us to continue this. No, it's, it's, it's perfectly. Yeah. And, siguro lang, no? action items lang. The design and what, what do you think of the design? Is there something we can replicate across the whole consortium? I like the idea. Yeah. Namin yun, no? But uh, we haven't done that before. But, you know, we tie it in with uh, rapid prototyping, you know. As part of the design and all, may output and then we take it through the additional analytic and, and customer development steps. But at least we come out of that design session with a tangible uh, prototype already, even if it may not even be fully functional. But it should start the ball rolling faster. What do you think? Uh, yes, I think you have a big room. <laughs> I think part of that is connecting the 
because some of these uh, developers are so scared going into the next level. Right. What they need uh, are, uh, what they need are companion, companion right. developers, meaning those, those who understand what's the other side. Been there, done that, and yeah, it's been a, <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's been a diff, uh, I understand where it was it's really difficult, I've been there. So uh, part of that is if there is really another team that will assist these groups to go right. to the next level, that will be really great. Right. And uh, I really like that idea. I think we call it needs assessment from the medical right. side. So good session. Who good session. One of the things we do, no? and again, don't get me wrong, it's a, it's a great start and we'd like to replicate that kind of format. Uh, what we do on top of that is to provide some of the discipline in, in terms of the documentation and understanding all of the steps because we will need that to go through clinicals. We will need that to go through the regulatory hurdles. I say in design lang, the, an informal design itself will not be sufficient. It, it, it kicks it off, it's a great kickoff, but you know, to take it through the next uh, levels, we need to add some more uh, uh, elements to it. I can add uh, US input to that. Because when we develop medical devices, I have seven FDA approved medical devices in the US. You start with a design control project every time you design anything, from syringes, implants. The simulation is to, ano bang gusto mo? The doctor normally outlines your like design input and power. Yeah. So we have to document them. We have to sit then, down. After that, you have your technologies on the other side to have also. We start to list the sound output. Paano ko ba mapapalabas? Ano yung gusto ng doctor? Then they design accordingly to that. And then after that, you come up with a prototype, then you do your risk assessment. Again, when you do develop medical devices, or put in the people, you have to make sure that you understand the risk getting into the design space. So yung palang, think of it as uh, a, a relay race. You're in the first leg of the relay race. Once na may design input na, medyo makapusing sa output, makakailangan mo na magpasa sa amin to the higher people here that have more experience in developing devices. So they can get to steer them to develop to the next level. And then it goes through the whole process of documentation and prototyping prior to pre-clinical, which is an animal study, then eventually clinic. So in your relay race in the development. And we have that knowledge here. I mean, Jude over here is a perfect example of what he had to go through for a regular body. I went through it for 15 years in the US. The transfer again here. Meron kayong mga tatanong. Maraming kayong matatanong ano kayo. Hey, magtanong lang kayo. Pero meron tayo mga kung hindi ko man ako yung mga kasagot, maghahanap tayo nila. Pero for the meantime, kailangan so, Even the economic analysis, because sometimes na, dunoy na tatakot yung mga designers and engineers, no? and, and that's the economic side of innovation is, is something that definitely needs to be addressed. No? Without, if you if you skip that part, you will also not be able to launch the, the innovation. Kailangan tapo uh, nito. You do cost benefit. Uh, so the doctor, for example, needs also to know the cost benefit of the device. And sometimes those issues will need to be folded back into the design process, you know, to iterate. Pamasyadong mahal, or maybe it can be, uh, maybe it needs some value engineering, uh, so that it can be manufactured more cheaply. Maybe you, ch you change the parts, you know, to, to something. I said, misa ni mga designers kusong nila yung pinaka high end na parts, but that may be over designing it more, more than what is uh, needed in the particular situation. So. All of those things we need to look at so that you know we, we, we take the next steps. Well, so speaking of projects that have to do with it, um, what happens because on our side is that the attendees of our we call it speed dating, speed dating technique. Yeah, one night stand. Yeah, I, yeah <laughs> but, but it's it, it, <laughs> the, 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 the doctor as a source of the idea right. and the designer we speed date them. Yeah. And usually what happens is after after mm -hmm. one after their exercise is it really doesn't. It, it doesn't jump into oh, wow. something. One, like one night stand yeah, yeah. It, 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 ends, it ends in the designing and the right. it, um, he, he major maybe on our side, it's also our fault. We haven't we haven't linked we haven't right. linked it to be and we haven't documented it though because right. usually the, the attendees of of a of a 
a design up will just be there for rapid thinking. Right. And, and actually to have it documented on, on what I really want. It's it's a, it's it's a rapid thinking exercise. Yeah. It is good and that's necessary also. But uh, one one thing we do in the phase one process, uh, how do you motivate people? And that's a general problem in any innovation ecosystem. How do you motivate people to do to take that long road? You know, it's not easy. So but one, one part of the motivation, and I think in our, in our design session, our clinicians did a great job of this, was to understand the patient. Put the patient at the top. Because at the end of the day, you know, the clinicians and the engineers, we're here because we want to make a difference. So that's part of our documentation. We try to understand that. We try to highlight that. And then we try to paint a very clear picture of how this technology is going to benefit and who is going to benefit. And that, putting that down in PowerPoint, putting that down in documentation, serves as the inspiration. Because it's not just fuel. It's not just you know, financials and economics and you know, circuit schematics and mechanical designs and that. It's also about the patients who will eventually benefit. And that needs to be a key part of the discussion. And we do that in, in phase one. And if you... If you review some of the presentations of the doctors, ang galing na, minsan ka nakakaiyak yung, when they dramatize, ano yun, ano ang term yun doon, doc, uh, case presentation, right? That, that's a medical term for it. You know, you have this patient, ganito yung, ito yung pinagalingan niya sa buhay, ito yung personal situation niya, ito yung nangyari sa kanya, and then here's how the technology, here's how the, the device will solve the patient's problem. So that needs to be a key part of the discussion, and if you have that there, that's what mo that's what helps motivate the, the team. So that's maybe something that you could add also to your design. So they give you the case presentation. Ask the clinicians. So they know clinicians are to do case presentation. They just ask them to do it, and you will be amazed by by the kinds of of, uh, of how they position the product and the. Uh, yes, Dr. Yeah, uh, yes, sir. Yeah, uh, do, do you limit your funding or your support to some guidance with electronic devices or you just run on some testing for medical like using a touch materials? Just We're not limited to support. electronics, uh, mechanical devices. We have some in our portfolio that are uh, surgical assist devices. So these are purely mechanical uh, devices. We also have... Uh, and your chem, no? uh, materials, like, yeah, like you said. Advanced no? materials. Uh, right, advanced materials. Uh, so yeah, that's certainly welcome as well. Those do fall under our uh, medical device. Oh, can you introduce yourself? Uh, I'm from the department From which university? Mariano Mariano. Oh, Mariano Mariano. Thank you for coming. Yes, from up north. Thank you for coming. And we would certainly love to have you join our consortium, so maybe yeah, we can talk afterwards. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Okay. Um, there was, uh, was going to add to that? How did you want to make, add to that? To me, it's very important that you have models that you can actually learn from. And that's always been my case here. I try to use my example of having gone through the startup while still in school, then venture capital, and then manufacturing, and then FDA approval. But then, after I talk, they tell me, Al, it's a US yet eh. Ano ba dito? Yung katabi mo, actually, is the first prime example of locally developed products that can really impact. So, the more you learn about Raul's technology, of course, you over here, the local developers. Marami na may Google yan, pero mabili siya. 30,000 hours in the two categories in terms of Philippine, and that's what this what this whole get together is all about. I think to me, being able to know that this knowledge exists in the Philippines, there's people who have done this now in the Philippines. You're not the first one, but you're on the beginning phase. At least know your part. Ano ka ba? First by 100, so so long na 200 pa sa puno kay Louis. Maybe Sir Earl will be the third part, which is the tall manufacturing in Ionics, or some of the electronic manufacturers in analog devices, will be probably the players in that area. That's the third phase. And full commercialization is the fourth phase. Ito na yung mga electronics, yung mga 
gustong sales force na mag-deliver. We don't have to but that's the area of development. So, I think understanding having gone through the process several times in day one, for me, nag-visualize ko na dito kung ano mangyayari. Sila, Raul, at sila, Jude. And I'm asking them, ano naman yung nai-encounter nyo? Of course, a little help from government and clinical evaluation of products for SBM no, small business and big craft, like this. That would be good. So, I think we we need to identify which part of the ecosystem are we playing for, and then then you can vocalize what your needs are and objectives. And then I think from that, mabubuo natin kung sino yung missing piece. And then we get that outside, if we need to. Yes, Earl? Yes, Earl. Uh, something to add? Yes, uh, I'd also like to speak on behalf of Yaki. Yeah. Because the design capability is there. Uh, okay. Looking forward to the... Yeah, perfect. So, so uh, <laughs> if you need design validation, uh, it's very critical that you consult with um, the manufacturing design work. It's very, very important. Um, because uh, we don't want to keep reinventing the wheel or make mistakes that have already been established and fixed in the past. And then, um, also there are certain, um, I, don't, I hope it's, it's not a shame, it's not, um, but you know, there are platforms already available. Um, build on. That you can build on. Right, right. Uh, and so, uh, especially for electronics and the shift towards uh, the internet of things, a lot of uh, analog de uh, type of devices can now be utilized. Uh, and um, so, for example, the likes of Ionics is working with uh, the likes of Conception uh, here in the Philippines so that they can make their air conditioning units smart. Uh, so, there are many different ways of uh, uh, doing it, and there is a lot of local support uh, in terms of development. And it's not that you know, the rest of the young people. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Earl. And and one of the to, to add to that, no, one of the speaking of building the capabilities of the ecosystem, one of the recent uh, realizations also, that in addition to design you know, capabilities, is also the the test capabilities. Uh, even our own regulatory agency may do mahina pa don, but you know you cannot develop until you also have. Are able to match that with appropriate uh, uh, test capability. So that's, I think, something that the OST would be you know, in a great position also to, to support and make the, the investments in uh, or to support the industry. Okay. Uh, other other questions on, on that? So thanks, Archie, for for, those, for sharing with us uh, your um, so. We can send you a uh, what we have a what we call a parang template or checklist when we do a preliminary assessment of innovation. So we can send you the, a copy of that, and then you can fill it in. Right, meron lang kami ano? We have a template that they can fill in that we use to quickly assess technology, and then you can ask your uh, your uh, hackathon, designathon participants to fill those in, and then. We can review and then help prioritize which which technologies we can support. Right. Yes, uh, yes, please. I just want to ask. Um, do you have any HRT or partners, especially in the FDA, for testing electronic and other related equipment? There are. There are. But I think there are many gaps. Uh, for example, we just recently had some tested uh, metrology lab. Did. ITDI, no? So they have some... What kinds of equipment they have? Medyo basic, eh, like the, the usual uh, uh, parameters, uh, temperature, yeah. Um, but I think uh, in, in, in our experience, in the, for some of the earlier, from some of our uh, uh, cases in our portfolio, May mga hindi pa mata test, and uh, I think we can propose for investments uh, to build up those uh, test capabilities. Uh, but the, the the most prudent way to do that is to tie it up with ongoing innovation activities. Because I mean, 
the danger is you want to avoid white elephants na biglang may binili ka lang and then wala rin namang dumadaan or gumagamit ng equipment doon. So, but I think we're at a position where kaya ng sabayan no, with, with the DOS support if we have an ongoing project. Uh, the consortium will help you identify ahead of time what the testing capability needed is needed for for that uh, technology, and then we start wrote, uh, we start mapping the investments needed. Yes. Through this year's uh, USC Spicer, uh, there's an electronic product development center in Pikutan. All right. Yes. Everybody. So you can test equipment there, uh, reference testing, and soon from the economics prove okay, um, electronic susceptibility. Right. It's been 500 watts, 1,000 watts. You go compare the equipment more, kung mag-fail or not. Correct. Yun yung kailangan. Yun yung flip side ng, ano, ano, if you're going to be the same generation. Something like a pacer. Pacemaker. A pacemaker type. Even other electronic equipment, it's a power. Correct. Outside of the field. So that applies for all electronic products, including biomedical devices. Yeah, we've been to the EPDC part, and I always believe that it's very useful for medical devices. The question is, you need this thing, you need this thing. Ada nak ayam? Sini ko. Agun, ayo. Kau mesti nama yang mana? Interaction. Karena the first word that I, I mean, some of the industry people that told me that they needed extra jigs and ways to set up nama ba or patok nama. I need your feedback. Unfortunately, it's on the other side of. I mean, other side of the team. So bapak dia mana? Friends, man. Yeah. 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 Ye
Kita balik kepada ya. Si Dong. Si Leo, si Leo. Ya, sini. Terus buat apa sih? Ah, yes only. There's also something that I think we need to seriously think about. Is the applicability of our technology for medical devices that can be used outside our borders. So the regulatory requirement for both CE markings and IVDT markings needs to be reviewed and be integrated into the processes that we're doing here. Some are actually on the electronic side, some are on the robustness of the product and the others. Because if it doesn't meet the minimum requirement for a CE marking, IPT marking for medical diagnostics, it will not be able to go out of the country. Yes. So what we do is we apply for the CE marking internationally, and then they have a whole bunch of different sorts of regulatory standards. But if those are actually incorporated already, then we don't have to be repeating the entire experimental method. So when you say incorporated within, uh, if, if there the are local... The framework for biomedical designs. Right. So, well, well we're putting it so together... So as part of the design review process? I don't know. Now, we have preliminary compliance assessment? No, it's more on post-prototype post already. So, right. for example, for diagnostic tests, there are actually specific standards right. that needs to be met para masabi that this is or this is, it has the in between IBDT markings, that's for the European market, including some of the CN countries. US has always been US FDA, so, but basically they are just two different names, but asking for the same thing. And if that is actually incorporated, or perhaps through a program here, we can bring an expert from outside who can give us more orientation how to set it up here, it's very relevant because of the ongoing ASEAN integration. We will be left by the Look at who might be uh, experts in the region and facilitate that similar purpose in the region. And then... Thank you, Rob. Yes, Vicky. See, one of my friends in DTI. 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 And we were just at East Coast. Now, we don't have a lot of money. Selling to the pharmaceuticals in this course. They don't have to make some Filipino to the program. It's Tokyo Ata or in the US. She's one of the experts, the top experts in FDA in the US. Retired. Right. Retired. So, they don't have to talk to you. Right. Yes. Okay. I'm going to tell you this. Yes. So, if you can introduce us, yes, ibalik. May, may pondo rin ang, uh, yes, uh, yes, sir. So, we actually have a program also, balik scientists. Maybe you're also familiar with that. Ano ba yung usiri yun? Pwede na sabi ko. So, maybe you can introduce us. Pwede mo kami mag-contact sa kanya. Wala rin na yung tigabili yung nasa usapan. Sige. Ano na buha mo? Tigabili yung nasa usapan. Awa ka natin. And then yung balik scientists, any field? Uh, any field, pero sa men, you have lang. Kung hindi related sa health, ipapasa namin sa ibang counselors. Pag division lang, but we can still support. And tapos yung balik scientists, it's not limited to HEIs. Actually, yung private companies can also avail of a balik scientist assistance. Kaya lang ngayon, walang masyadong, walang masyadong kumuha. Kasi ang impression nila is, ang balik scientist is only for uh, HEIs. Actually, no. We can, we, we can, we can, oh, the startups or the private companies can also uh, avail of a public right. scientist assistant. Technical field. Tama ang kwarta natin. Pero kung nari, hindi siya technical expert, but maybe in a closer, it's a regulatory expert in a technical field that qualify as public scientists. Ah, okay. Oh, kanyari, ano siya, uh, uh, he's an engineer or scientist, but ang galing niya sa regulatory, regulatory compliance. Pero he's working in an in a technical industry, no? So that, I think it might justify it. Ah, hindi balik sa akin. 
Para meron ring ano, DOSC support possible for those kinds of individuals. All right. Yes, in the back and then up. Yes, um, in relation to the regulatory um, regulatory organizations and to the compliances, I, I would just like to make a strong point here that um, me, a, a product that doesn't meet regulations and compliance uh, doesn't comply the, the, the regulations is just a mere um, innovation. Because uh, project, it's not possible to get a product in the market without our customers without meeting those requirements. Yes. So, That's why it's a, uh, a must-do for all of the projects in our portfolio. We, yeah. we have them uh, hurdle that, uh, that step. So I highly suggest na ipapasok to sa design process. Right. Kasi usually mga products um, gumagana nga pero pagdating doon sa stage na yun tapos hindi nila na meet right. then makakaapekto so makakaapekto to sa schedule kasi sure. magkakaroon talaga ng respin sa product. Yeah. So yeah, it's a, and it's even costlier to do any design changes at that yes. late stage. So yeah. Syempre ayun lang mangyari. Yun. Right. So at the earliest stage possible, we want to make sure that we address all of those issues, regulatory, economic, of course clinical, safety, and all of those things. Among maaga pa lang, while it is still cheaper to address and, and, and fix all of those issues, iniisip na natin. That's, that's our philosophy in the consortium. So yun, um, in relation to that, din, um, I am... Um, gusto ko rin po itanong kung meron na po ba tayong mga guidelines na may mga checklists per stage sa mga projects para hindi siya pwede mag-proceed sa next stage kung hindi namin may tumabagay. So there are a lot of guidelines already out there. We didn't have to reinvent the, the wheel. Wala naman kami hiniram. Uh, and, and part of our challenge is uh, localizing some of these. So for example, uh, FDA, uh, Euro rec compliance is, you know, documentation among them, but uh, when you're not, when you're just trying to address the local market first, we need to take stock of what is the precedent and what are the requirements for our local FDA so that you can clear that hurdle first. As a siyempre, while we were dreaming big and, you know, trying to tackle regional and global markets, uh, let's first uh, dominate our, our local market and be able to comply with that Siyempre, may sariling kulong rin yung local regulatory natin. No? Uh, so once we address, so we address that, but we also uh, want to make sure that you're, you're looking out for the global standards as well. Uh, yes, Ron? Just to add on, kasi we are a little, little pa dapat, behind talaga on our FTA requirements. Right now, for the diagnostic, the diagnostic testing, they can only review then the rest you will the local, the local FDA the rest FDA. you will request for FDA exemption Correct. in the absence of its capacity to to test so maybe as groups from our end it's it's convenient because we don't have to but if you really want to make us you know regionally and globally competitive maybe we can already incorporate what is being asked even if it's not required currently uh -huh. by our regulatory. So, um, my suggestion is, uh, um, if, there is a, if there is a pipeline from from design review all the way to prototype, field testing, and market evaluation, or post-market post -market evaluation as well, in between those two phases, if I incorporate your, your regulatory requirement, please do the minimum. Because there are already standards followed, ISO standards for manufacturing and all of this, including the C and IVD marks for each diagnostic test for infectious disease, for non-communicable disease, and for medical devices that are readily available from the web. So maybe um, um, uh, you know, a small committee can, can to put together and code and go uh, Filipinize the whole out a roadmap for the globalize your program natin. Localize. Globalize your program. So that way, paglabas, okay, nasa Pilipinas or nasa ibang bansa, hindi na-open-aided, 
We're harmonized. All right, all right. So we set the target, at least regional compliance, and then we, we set the roadmap from the current local scenario into uh, at least the regional compliance. And then we can teach our local FDA how to regulate it's better that we rather than someone is regulating us, but they don't know what they're regulating. It's more. We got from out of the blue some unreasonable. We got the base the requirement that they need now. Might as well, you know, it's really coming from the sector or as we're developing locally. Right. Is there another question? Yes, I would like to. Yeah, you. Okay, just to touch, touch on the requirements. I have been in the medical de device industry for 20 years. I had summed it up with one word, trim, technology, regulatory, intellectual property, and yung M, tatong M yun, M3, manufacturing, market, which means clinical testing, and money, makana ba lahat yan. So, kapunta ako di yung STP, sir, that I did present to that. Look at the trim on the development. I apply it in almost any device I, I develop or any technology for that matter. And in terms of regulatory, we have products approved in the US and in Europe. Medyo applicable naman yung data ng dalawa. That we need to confirm that here, Jude, siguro, malaman natin kung hanggang sana aabot yung mga testing mo dito, kung accepted din na siya. Because that's an information that will be very helpful, especially if we are harmonizing within the region. I say I think it would be kind of silly for us to develop unless in, in your case, Raul, if your your markers are really that good and they can address a particular type of disease in a better platform compared to the European model or the US model, I can see the importance of acceptability of having a regulatory filing in CE and US FDA. But for other devices typically but at the same time with a CN harmonization. Anyone who has an experience, I would say, would would love to hear from you in terms of my product or kila walito kita talagang sa Indonesia or sa Malaysia or sa Thailand. Malalaman mo kung ano ni Hindra. That's very what pake share sa the environment natin dito. I think that's the to me when I saw this happening, I was always been organizing a government, university, industry round table for research. Ito na yun eh. So I didn't have to reinvent it for help. So when I arrived here, nang kinagawa nyo na dito, ayan ang government, ayan ang university, ito ang industry, kayo. So with that, tumutulong na lang ako kung ano alam ko dati akong industriya. So but I think the key part is, let's voice out, be more vocal about your issues and your problems. That way we know what you need. And then we'll try to pitch in whatever everyone learns as they go through the development process. Okay, Dion? So right now, I'm repeating the entire process in Australia. So, mga kapagod. Wala nagsabi Okay, on, uh, and on that note, no, I would like to add something to the table for discussion. You know, sa market. And I, I think I had this, we had this discussion before with, with, with June. And maybe this is something we can put on the table for, for discussion. And, and that is uh, government support for market creation initiatives. Uh, as they say in Silicon Valley, we have to eat our own dog food. Uh, and sino uh, palatakilik sa mga ginawa natin, kundi tayo rin. So, um, one of the ideas uh, that uh, I think we would like to uh, get some, more, some traction on is, is for the government to allow certain uh, leeway or some preferential treatment in terms of uh, locally developed uh, technologies. We're not saying 100%, no, but we're just saying to uh, to create um, a foot in the door, so to speak, uh, policy uh, for for local for for ah, kung kaya si Trump, no, America first. Filipino <laughs> first. Mayan tayong uh, Philippine first. And I think that one one role model is uh, what's in Thailand. So sa Thailand, and maybe you can would you like to elaborate on this? Uh, uh, yeah, in, in Thailand, they have, uh, they have this uh, Thailand 4.0 program, and their concept is I think 1.0 was uh, 
So 4.0 na sila, nila and then two. three, I know, was uh, industrialization, meaning they now make, make their own cars, their industries, and they, they, they believe that uh, they're a middle-income country, and to move to a high-income country, they need to be innovating. So they have to create, kasi ngayon, they're just making their own, they're, they're making uh, parts, but they, these are, they're just manufacturing. It's not their own creation. So they want, design. Yeah, design. So that's the, the Thai, Thailand 4.0 is about uh, encouraging innovation in Thailand so that it will be a product or products. And uh, to encourage this, um, uh, the Thai government is, I think they're requiring um, government institutions or government procurement yani hospitals. Government buyers. Government buyers. Government buyers. To source, if there's a Thai manufacturer, to source at least 20% of their requirements from that from from Thai manufacturers right. or developers for that matter. 20%. They're not, ask, they're not asking for 100% yeah. sourcing locally. No? But you know, foot in the door lang, 20% lang muna, one fifth of your requirement. Uh, yes, Al? Yeah, one, pro one program that I got involved in and in trying to, because I'm a medical device developer, I just talking to Jude about sterilization. Normally, we, we sterilize our product using double sterilization. We don't, we don't have one in PNRI and Indians, reducing its power. So when we were trying to replicate it so that there'd be a real medical device capability here, people were asking me, why are we going to have to uh, uh, do that? Why don't we PPP in uh, private partnerships? Which I tried to bring private partners into the venture to almost willing to put pork in 40 million. But the problem was the regulatory was not yet set. They were changing promotion of PNRI to regulation as well, because it's mixed in one unit. But the more important part is an example that got cited of government involvement in medical devices in, of all places, Sri Lanka. They act in gamma sterilization. What the government did was they put up a facility for gamma sterilization, and they mandated, it's a government facility, they mandated all gloves, gloves, to be imported, yeah, latex gloves, to be imported, non-sterile, so you can go through sterilization in their facility. They created for, the market. They created the market for government hospitals only, not even private. Okay, okay. Government hospitals lang. Doon dapat dadaan. Doon dapat dadaan. Yung na-save nilang pera, kung sabihin mo, a glove sterile is 25 pesos, a glove non-sterile is 5 pesos, padaanin mo doon, naging sterile, yung savings nila from buying non-sterile gloves and going through the process, uh, in one year, was enough to build a second facility. Okay. Kumita na, na. Yung, yung savings, okay. hindi lang kita, savings. Oh. Yung nasave ng mga hospital, na in, public, na para kumakita. Na-invest na ng government to another facility. Yeah, they can, because sabi mo dati, DOH, bumibili ng gloves, half a billion. Okay. Dahil doon sa ginawa na lang yun, bumibili sa ng 100 million pesos na worth of non-sterile gloves, in a sterile life na, and the facility cost them 150 million, 250 savings na lang. Within a year, yung 250, pwede na gumawa ng bago. Mga ganong citation ng example ng pwede natin gawin na to much bigger scale. But we can always start with one product. So that was a, a demonstration. What I need from industry though is you have to be more vocal. You have to identify. We have to band together to say, ako, uh, uh, the schools, the academia, as well as industry, all writing out your wish list. And kung may narinig kayo dito gusto nyo, so, mama, na kayo and then, then pa endorse natin kay sec Secretary Boy no, to the other secretaries. Yes. Right. I, I hope you understand that DOS can only do so much. Kasi because of our, we are limited by our mandate. But we're trying to address these no? gaps. So right, right. Little by little. Correct, right. In fact, we started talking to FDA a few years ago. Right. We have initiated several meetings with them. So that, yun, yung concern ni, ni Doc Prauna, sana naman i-prioritize niyo yung Filipino yeah. innovations. They're not ready for that. So, Maybe, uh, so what, what they're asking well, we from us keep, actually, uh, making yeah, long, no? what, what they're asking from us is tayo na daw yung gumawa ng technical working group who will develop the standards and all. Which is what suggested. Yeah. yeah. Pangunahan na natin. Tapos, yeah. bigay na natin sa kanila. Yeah, yeah. Nila, Tapos, no? sabihin natin, ito yeah. yung standards. Tapos, they will implement that. Kasi so, from their end, we also don't know who to tap. Right. So, kasi, eh, tayo, tayo magkakilala. 
So, the, the so tayo na lang yung mag-initiate. <laughs> Parang yun yung sinasabi nila sa amin. So okay. that's one. Plus the so you think that might be the, uh, the approach also for DOAs, yes. for example, in yes. terms of government hospitals procurement, in terms of the marketplace? Uh, in their case naman, we're trying to reach out to PhilHealth. PhilHealth also has a reimbursement pathway. Uh, Kaso ang, well, nagkaroon kasi ng changes in, several changes in leadership actually. So, hindi rin masyadong nagpro-progress. But we're trying to bring up, so, bring it up every now and then. So, is that something that we can, you know, have as a formal initiative within the group? Is, yeah, so, so, in we addition can, to the regulatory we initiate, initiative, but, we have but market creation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but definitely we will. So, we have the regulatory uh, development initiative. We also have market creation, market development activities that we can endorse to appropriate government agencies. And yes, Go And one important item, kasi pag sinabing Filipino first, Filipino first, we can shout our hearts out every day about that here. That requires a legislative agenda. We've reviewed to see the laws because I've been competing with foreign technologies in my home country until last Thursday. But we were looking for all the laws that will protect local innovations and it's only more on taxation shielding, but nothing uh, about yeah. priority. Not about the uh, market? Uh, no, we were asked Some government laws. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're they're doing. Doing. They're they're doing. Doing. Prioritization. If, if you are competing with a foreign supplier, kung same kayo na, if actually, kung 20% or 15% higher ka, you will still be the priority. A problem yeah. yata kasi, Rosel, yung, kasi a distributor is treated as a local, if they're a local distributor, even though they're just importing their, they are, you know, the whole product. The Filipino companies so that, say, but they're saying. So, lusot na sila dun sa clause na yun. Lusot na sa clause. Correct. Hindi yata yung, that's the issue. No, sir. Ang nasa procurement law is the material should be primarily sourced from the Philippines. Yun yung, oh, sir. Yes, sir. The, the material should be primarily sourced from the Philippines. So, baka, baka yung interpretation baka GPPB yung kailangan, we need a GPPB yeah. opinion Actually, on, on that. Actually, yun din ang isa-isa ko, sir. Baka GPPB so, yung, yung, no? uh, yung mas kailangan okay. natin. Na, we need na to fight natin. in the right battleground. <laughs> but also, I, I found okay. out just recently that one of the priority industries that DTI wants to develop is hospital recommended by medical right. devices. It's in okay. their investment priority plan. Yeah. So, I said that they see it as one high growth area for the Philippines. So, in terms of uh, DTI support, maybe we can also tap them. But uh, under the DTI, so DTI is DTS, part of the representation of the GPTB. Yeah. I think, Siguro, as the USD, to encourage naman our similar bosses ng mga tech developers for now to help us for your bigger boys to inform GPTB. Because it's different what we're discussing so, here from what they are implementing. So maybe one deliverable for us is to draft maybe a uh, white paper yeah. initially just to and then uh, add uh, the benchmarking with similar initiatives in, in the region. But I alam nila hindi out of the blue. We're not just you know it's not just the Philippines doing this. Uh, yes, I'm good. We tried to, I mean, because my US is tried consulting. <laughs> When we did a study in 2013, what's the biggest blocker of science and technology research and development in the Philippines? Single answer among the academic community, from the men. So, so we did a summit with DBM, the COA, the OST, and everybody. And the outcome of that was uh, a recommendation towards the regular scientific equipment procurement. But this is a new item then. This, but, but, well, this is yeah. the other side. Which is, I can, uh, this is the buyer side. Yeah, yeah this is the, the buyer side. But I think we, ha we can, if, indeed, right there that there is particular sections. Because you have pieces of the information here. That's not common knowledge. Right. Because you have to encounter it in your process with DOH. You know it from your assessment of procurement. Ako, I talked to the Dennis and Chago, GPPB. This has not come up to the issue about it's about supporting Philippine innovation. Yeah? If you're a startup company, right, you're starting a company like this and this and that, one of the procurement requirements is you must have a single government receipt worth 20 million seven. Uh, you know, uh, no, qualification. <laughs> Previous contract. And I would like to ask our AIP partners also to weigh in on this discussion because this is, I think, an industry-wide uh, 
concern, especially the local uh, anti-local start. Go ahead, Ming. Maybe you can. Uh, they look at some figures, but we basically went through the same activity with the OST office. I think it's fifty percent of the next deal somehow that you have a contrast. Oh, okay. Twenty-five percent of the total. Twenty-five percent. It's biased against uh, SMEs. And, and startups. So. Right. So there could be two avenues of uh, where we can do market uh, creation support. Number one is you know, the foot in the door, 20%. The other one is uh, the uh, qualification in terms of. Uh, previous uh, contract, no? so maybe we can create some additional space there. No? So we have two points of possible interventions in terms of policy that we can try to influence. Obviously, yes, you have to influence Koa. Pero GPPB rin yun, kasi GPPB yung nag in on qualifications. Koa is dependent on what regulations are out there. So they just interpret. Saka policy, pag sinabi ni GPPB. Pag sinabi ni GPPB, this is the policy. Okay. So, okay. so, okay. yeah. <laughs> so I think GPPB dapat yung kapusin. Yung ano, that's where the battleground is going to be. No? To create, you know. Uh, and maybe disruptive yung, yeah. like, tanong ko pa nga, eh pwede ba yung mga, kung cumulative receipts, pwede na nga. Pero hindi na single receipt purchase. Correct. <laughs> yes, Lorraine. If I may add, if, this requires legislative agenda. Maybe we can um, knock on the door of Senator Bam Aquino, who heads the home state. Oh, so that's the... Yeah? Yeah. So, because if we need this to be a policy that the Senate would approve, then Senator Bam Aquino is the head of uh, the Science and Technology Committee, and also he supports um, um, SMEs also, so startups. So it's a perfect combination, and it's just one senator. So we just need to um, bring his, this to his attention. And uh, we have um, connections with that. So I think we have two clear suggestions on, in terms of uh, policy. Yeah. The procurement, kasi, yeah. you have three levels of intervention. You can do it on the training level. You can do it on the administrative level, which is the secretary just says. Training is uh, staff. No? Training of the staff. staff. Like UP right? is training their BACs. The procurement uh, staff. Right. Bits and awards committees. Nila. Right. So that's one intervention. But yun yung internal lang sa loob ng no. university. The second level is administrative wherein the respective departments can issue AOs, administrative orders, or executive orders or in the case of DOS, IRRs, yeah, and so on. With implementing like rules and regulations okay. also. And then of course, the last option is legislative, which is a little more difficult than uh, there's a three year turnaround. Yeah, may may timeline on uh, that. Yeah. Kaya kami, we try to stay, we, we, we want the input, pero Really, if we can address it through administrative or training-wise that PCHRD can initiate, yeah. that's probably the fastest route, if, if you ask. And then we plant the seed for the longer-term legislative action. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, so, um, I also wanted to have a benchmark. Uh, so, as Ionix, now we work with a lot of startups in the Silicon Valley. Right. And there's some tinge of irony here because you're talking about <laughs> startups and then uh, in Philippines, and here we are in Philippines working with startups in the states. And, and, and so, uh, so we have you know a bunch of um, customers now who are you know uh, with arguably medical startups. You know, um, the health patch, to get measure ECG, uh, and then communicate through Bluetooth, low energy to your cell phone. Right. Uh, so that's arguably a, a medical device. And, and, and so, so basically. Um, you were mentioning something about uh, you know uh, different steps, so not to focus regulatory pathways. Um, and so, uh, as a startup, you have to be very lean, right. and you don't have the, the, the resources to have full-time staff with yes. every single component yes. of your business. You're relying on the ecosystem. For you have to normally for those things. Yes, so. ecosystem. And so, I mean, from from our industry perspective, and that is ironic. Uh, Vic and Hillary and, and the rest of Yapi, mm -hmm. we serve a particular segment of, of that whole uh, ecosystem. Yes. And so we experience that, you know, startups.
hiring ops would come to us. They give us a specification. I thought, right now, look up the thought. And then please help us design it, and then prototype it, and manufacture it. And so a startup. A, a startup. A startup. Start yeah. oh, and then the startup is then focused on uh, business dev, uh, marketing, yeah. uh, channel management, licensing, etc. And certification uh, alongside us. Oh. So um, as a startup, you don't have to do everything. everything. Don't right. be overwhelmed Correct. by having to, to do everything. You, have, you, should, you should learn how to uh, break it down into different pieces and figure out who the area experts are Correct. and then properly delegate it uh, with, with the most, uh, capital, in the most capital efficient way. And, and so um, I, I've, I've experienced a lot of startups here in the Philippines. Now, they want to do everything. It's like, okay, I'm going to control that. But that's, but that's not really the case. Not because you're going you're gonna to bog yourself down yeah. and, and yeah, it's going to take too long. Too much money. Yeah. And, yeah, and too much uh, money and resources. And so um, I think um, uh, maybe uh, some a shift in, in the way of uh, approaching businesses and running startups is, is to figure out what you want your core to be uh, and, and focus on what you need and then delegate the rest. Or outsource them. So that's the community building part. No? We have to make sure that we know what the rest of the community is doing and then, um, then do the matching, yeah, I guess. Compare notes. Okay, compare notes. All right. Uh, anything else on the, the market uh, market creation activity? So I think, uh, thank you, Al. So we, we have this uh, framework for you know, analyzing all of our initiatives and understanding where the gaps may lie, and then identifying initiatives to address the issues here. So we've touched on uh, regulatory uh, manufacturing, certainly. We've, we've had uh, uh, some good uh, discussion on that, and the market uh, uh, potential. On the money side, uh, side uh, at the first stage, I think uh, the, the new um, uh, it's Initiatives of, of the OST will certainly be, be come in handy uh, there. Uh, any other uh, issues on any of these points you would like to touch on? On, on the venture capital side, I've begun conversations with industry. Uh, I, I, one of your board of directors, I see Tito, Tito Gito, uh, chairman uh, of. Uh, but we need to band together again. This is the classic case of if you build it, the money will come. But if they don't see you, they're not gonna have a money devoted to you. That's why I'm having a collection of experiences between Raul and OSI and something to follow in terms of the devices development in Ionics or any of your partnerships. To me, once you start showing this group of people who are developing a particular field, the money will follow. Like me, when I started in the US in 1996, biotech was hot still. So may perang biotech, pero mas marami pa rin sa absent saka sa absent saka sa, sa, mga medical, sa mga electronics. But nevertheless, by saying that we have a consortium and there's products being developed, coming out, commercialized, then it gets to get the, the initiative from the venture capital community. Yeah. Maybe we should raise a fund, which I'm already saying now. Now is the time to raise a fund. That's what I told Ito Gili from ICCP. And I'm bringing them for my meeting and pass the next this Friday and Saturday to begin the conversations with government to start again matching funds po na tayo. Raul, how much do you Let's see, the OST. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah matching right. funds right. of the OST is <laughs> what I was talking about. And then right. once you have enough traction to show, okay, you have sales of 50 million, okay, private VCs now will take notice. But not until you have that kind of volume. Actually, the number that you gave me is 100 million. That's all. Now, you can't do that. But you can't do that. Yeah, we need to win to help people here to start with. But again, every step of the way, guys, from from the early development, co-sharing. Ako, I used all animal facilities are outside. I never tested mine. All clinicals are outsourced. That's my right. the, the only thing is the making of material in-house. And then if I need electronics or anything else, outsource it. So again, focus on what your key competence is. And then from there, consult the group. If you have intellectual property, the reason intellectual property is part of TRIP is that you'll feel comfortable to open yes. up to other potential yeah. helpers. Yeah, kasi hindi ka takot kasi meron kang pinangahawakan na. Alright. 
and also incentivizes them to, to take to risk you. with also. you because you have uh, some protection. And I was telling people in the venture capital community that medical devices takes three to five years to develop, minimum. Probably 50 to 100 million pesos or said and done. Sa tayo mo kuha ng kuha ng magkakapital. Your, car, your companies are probably very shy about developing that product, kind of funds. So that's why the US is stepping up to the plate to the tune of 10, 5, 10 million. 5 million, kaya nila mabilis. About 5, they have to talk to them. Ano? Oh, 40 na raw. Oh, tumataas na. Oh, mamaya, 50 na yan. <laughs> but again, the more that we demand, the things that we're willing to also do. Confident to, also the UST is yeah, in step. That they're doing something right also. Increasing their part, the investment. And that the marketing uh, demand. Right. Kaya talagang, I think we are in this particular unique part that we are also developing our healthcare system with PhilHealth. I want to touch that because of medical reimbursement. My products are all medical reimbursement in the US. And that's the biggest market in any medical device if you are Medicare reimbursable. Somebody is willing to pay already. Yeah, that's a uh, big part of the, the, the risking. And if you propose to government, hey, I have something that will save you a lot of money, Mr. Government, I don't think they'll show you away right away. Ayusin na lang natin yung ano, uh, clarification of procurement uh, yeah. uh, leeway. <laughs> so I think, uh, thanks, definitely, I'm so happy you guys are all here to see this kind of support from industry. And uh, thanks, Al, for uh, addressing the market side. Yung, isa pang, yung IDON is uh, IP, and, and I'll touch on that a bit. No? Are there any concerns or issues uh, that, that you'd like to raise or discuss there? Last part of our session today. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, any questions? Okay. So again, thanks for the, uh, thank you for all of the inputs. So we'd like to just wrap up with some of the inputs uh, from some of our, our participants today. Uh, I'll turn the floor over to the rain, and then uh, we can uh, end the discussion. So first of all, thank you for coming despite the very short notice. I'm so sorry about that. But um, it's good that we had a very um, lively discussion, airing the um, concerns from the academe to the industry and even um, the government side, the limitations of our um, of our hosts, the DOST, and um, the apparent gaps that we still have in our ecosystem. So, um, things to note earlier was that um, there have been certain practices um, that um, were implemented, such as uh, good practices on the design-a-thon, which is actually a needs assessment that we're trying, and that um, what we can do is actually just refine and um, augment those kinds of activities so that they can also benefit. And um, it would not just be a one-off thing, and, um, and um, motivating people, not just the speed dating. And um, it's good that AAB is here so that um, our partners know that they provide the signs and that um, we also have PBDC as our partner testing facilities. So for those um, teams or um, initial projects that needs those um, those. Uh, services we have that and our representative from Don Mariano Marcos. So um, if we need um, advanced materials like advanced ceramics, so we can hook up with them. And in turn, we also um, welcome you to our um, consortium. So um, if you have um, other applications and you need um, partners to build it with you, the consortium is here ready to, to help you. And um, for, the, for the other uh, very glaring issues such as the, the regulatory, having that um, guideline or checklist that um, uh, we need to um, have and possibly quote unquote, dictate to, to actually help our um, regulators as well. So we need to be prepared with ASEAN integration because as Dr. Destora said, if we're not prepared, we'll be left behind. 
So um, it's good that um, from the uh, ideation phase, we are already aware of those um, regulatory processes and um, the design phase, which our industry partners can help us with, was also raised in that. And once we've already successfully produced our um, prototypes and even um, passed, somewhat passed our regulatory, the market, there needs to be a um, creation of that. And um, uh, the suggestion was um, for some sort of legislation to help prioritize local products and um, to have that conversation and link with the GPPP and DTI which um, Ms. Russell um, brought up. It's good that um, it's good to hear that not only with PCHRD that hospital equipment and biomedical devices is a priority, but also with our um, DDI. So we must um, take hold of that opportunity. And so as we have learned earlier, the trim that uh, Doc Al has presented must take note of that. So in terms of the training, we have the um, DOST, um, ECHRD to help us, and on the administrative side, um, the AOs that we need to help guide our processes and the AOs, and for the legislative, we know who to um, approach. And as for the um, uh, statement is, yeah, as um, startups or small projects, we must focus on our key competencies in that um, we are not alone. This is an ecosystem. So let's leverage on working together instead of just um, doing things on our own. So um, with that, um, uh, our output for today is a white paper, which we can um, recommend to our um, stakeholders so that um, ours is a concerted effort and it's not just one uh, they only have um, like one group that they can talk to in terms of biomedical devices so, thank you uh, thank you uh, very much Lorraine for that uh, uh, summary and also thank you of course uh, our uh, sponsor